What is up, everyone? It is Thursday, December 12th. Uh, I've been home from the trip to Florida for Simply Clean and Turkey Rod Run for a little over a week now. And uh, just been chiseling away in my night laser shop, getting caught up on laser engraving jobs. Uh, Christmas is usually kind of crazy because I, I try to do a bunch of different stuff with night laser for Christmas. I try to do uh, some Christmas tree ornaments, some bespoke stuff, you know, some individual stuff for different people, Christmas gifts but i've been gone for a few weeks so basically i'm catching up on commission work as well so i've been busy with that but this episode is going to be uh basically showing you guys the new tgc garage space so this is going to be a short one because there's really not much else going on there's a lot going on but not enough to like compile into one episode so i'm at my house now and we're going to drive about 20 minutes to moltenboro new hampshire where the tgc garage space is now so um I'm pretty excited to show you guys. Uh, I'm excited first and foremost to just have uh, some square footage to park my cars inside through the winter. So as I said, it's December, so it's uh, it's already full-blown winter here in New Hampshire. So my father's hobby shop uh, is basically my backyard, and I am blessed enough to be able to work on my projects out of his shop and with him, uh, but I can't store my cars in there. So I have uh, two carports here in my front yard that car is staying and that's not acceptable as I'm sure you can imagine. So I'm excited to finally have a space where the cars can sit inside, even if I'm not uh, immersing myself in projects there uh, for the time being. But we're gonna take a look at that place. I've got the Sentry and the 700 over there at the moment. Uh, as you can see, I'm wearing some new TGC gear. Uh, this is, pro I'm probably a week behind from when I'm filming this to when you're seeing this now. So this pre-order for this new uh, TGC line is going to still be alive. So I'll talk about that more when we get to the unit. And as you can see, I have some wheels in the back seat. Those are the wheels uh, that I'm going to be running on the Century. I've kind of unveiled what they were on Instagram or kind of just given away what they were, I guess. Uh, people were asking me what wheels I was gonna run. And I kind of just uh, kept it quiet for a while. Not that they were some crazy set of wheels, but in my opinion, they are one of two if not maybe three sets of wheels that I had to have on that car. So I'm excited to have them. They're in from Japan. Uh, more about those as well when we get back to the shop. But yeah, I'm sure you noticed that there were some wheels in the back seat. So that's what they are. They're gonna be the first wheels that find their way onto the Sentry when the air suspension is finished. Preferably Japanese market turbo diesel. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Definitely want an FJ80. But you already know. All right, now we can go to the unit. Got a two post lift going in here pretty soon. Uh, the landlord actually uh, collects cars. He's retired, owns numerous real estate. Uh, in the area and uh or real estate properties i should say and he's a car guy so when he knew that we were going to be in here doing some car stuff he was like are you gonna want to put a lift in and we're like if that's okay and he goes well i just bought a car dealership that went out of business and bought nine two post rotary lifts uh and he's willing to put one in for us for nothing so that was amazing uh that we get basically a free two post lift and installed so they just went through this whole place. They painted the floors, all new LED lighting, uh, painted the walls. It looks awesome. So I've got the 700 and the Century in here. Once the Century gets in here, it, gets, it, it fills up fast, but better than nothing. The 
the size comparisons between the 700 and the century are literally comical. Uh, I haven't had a chance to have them both sitting next to each other, so that, that's pretty hilarious to see them in here. So this is the front door here. There's a parking area out front here where you first come in. It's too bad we don't have an office space in here. Like there's some cabinets and obviously some, some windows out front. It'd be really nice to have this kind of squared off in between these two front windows as like an office or like a lounge space uh, to kind of hang out but we'd lose uh, a spot for a car so since the century is going to be here for a while i'm not going to dive into this car as soon as i thought i was um i'm going to do all the work on this car in my father's shop since we've got way more uh, tooling and uh accessibility to stuff there so right now this is just basically in warm storage uh probably for the next couple months i was really hoping to get on that project sooner than later but uh, I'd rather it sit here for a couple months as winter picks up rather than in my carport at home. So I'll get on that soon. But, so for now, basically, it's, it's tough to uh, want to frame in an office or lounge space here because we lose space. All right, got the lights on in the shop now. I filled up my card earlier, so I actually had to run back to my house to get another card because... Ah, I'm not a YouTuber and I didn't keep any of my camera stuff with me. So I had to run all the way home and all the way back. Uh, so this is a thousand square foot, just over a thousand square feet. Uh, two post lifts gonna go in right by the overhead door and uh, just inside the door, as, as close to the door as we can get it and then have a couple cars back here for storage. So it'd be really nice to have a lounge set up. So we might be able to figure that out at some point soon. They just repainted the floors and cleared it it's got that like kind of grit uh surface to it so it's really not as slick as it looks like it would be you know if, if you got it wet or if you got oil on it or anything like that they painted all the walls uh all new baseboard uh, all new lights got a bathroom over here nothing to write home about but we got a bathroom in here and yeah i mean where an office space used to be so the wheels I got for the Century, uh, they are original three-piece Japanese Desmond Versus. And they are uh, basically emulated around the factory Century wheel as the work Emmett's is as well. Um, there's a few wheels out of Japan that are basically based around the Century wheel. So those were the wheels that I was really most concerned about having on the car. Um, I think like a big five spoke, like a Futura or something like that would look amazing tucked up underneath this car as well. But I just love like OEM plus or very period correct looking things on cars. And uh, as you can see, the factory wheel has, a, has numerous spokes, you know, and, and, and if you're familiar with the work Emmett's wheel, uh, that's exactly what the Emmett's wheel looks like for the most part with like the, the center cap, this black and gold. And uh, so these are the verses here. They're a staggered set. They're an eight and a nine. 501.14.3. And as you can see, center caps are very similar, although it's not a black very center, but um, it's, it's got a step up and it's a really big uh, center cap. You get a better view at the two wheels against each other. Very similar center cap sizes. Um, spoke you know count and all that are pretty similar these are 17s so these are a 17 by 8 and a 17 by 9 uh, I was very curious if the car was going to be able to lay out with 18s tucked up underneath it and I'd love to do 18s when I was looking at uh, Emmett's wheels obviously 18s were the preferred like size or the easiest to find size uh, in OEM specs but my buddy Drew from England, uh, Pipey McGraw on Instagram, had a short wheelbase VG40 Century that he bagged not too long ago. And he was running 16s on it. He ran down to 15s and even 14s on it for a little bit. But the 16s he ran on it um, tucked a bit in the rear. And I kind of picked his brain about the, the spacing he had up in the wheel well. And uh, it, he said it was pretty tight. So I felt like 18s might hit the inner wheel wells before the car was able to lay out. And I, you know, being so rare, I really don't want to cut this car up. It's, it's quite a rare car. So I'd rather not um, cut more than I have to. Uh, 
uh, just for the sake of being low. Normally I'm all about that, but I've won one of these cars for so long and I finally have one and they're super rare and yeah, I really don't wanna chop it up just to get another inch or two of height out of it. So 17s, I'm pretty certain this thing will be able to go as low as I can suspension wise um, on 17s. But since they're a three piece, I can always step them up if, uh, if I have to. And a one inch step up isn't really gonna be that huge of a, an aesthetic look. So I'm really psyched on these. Uh, these may only be on the car for a little bit when I finish the suspension. There's a few other things that I kind of have in mind for the car. So, you know, as always, wheels make the car, but wheels come and go. So I'm really excited about these. What's crazy about these wheels specifically is my friend Chase, who you saw in uh, the Ocean City episode and the SEMA episode, uh, who I stayed with for SEMA, uh, sent me a screenshot of these wheels for sale. They had just been imported from Japan. And oddly enough, um, they're the same guy that imported my Century. It's not who I bought the Century off of, but it's this guy Bo from uh, Portland, Oregon. And he had originally imported the Century, sold it to Nate, the kid from Seattle who I bought it from. And oddly enough, Bo is the one who had imported these Desmonds from Japan and was selling them. So it's really kind of weird uh, how big the world is and how crazy it is that I own a car that he imported from Japan and a set of wheels he imported from Japan and I've never met the guy. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. <laughs> but uh, with today's internet, you know, you can, you can meet anybody for the most part. Now, as far as the new uh, TGC apparel goes, that pre-order is currently live now and it's gonna run through Christmas Eve. So these are uh, the new shirts. This is uh, the pullover hoodie that I'm wearing now. Um, we've got a logo down on the cuffs and we're also doing uh, crew neck sweatshirts. These are American apparel with the monogram on the front and a logo on the back. These are printed in yellow as well. Really stoked on these. And uh, we're doing the windbreakers, which you saw me wearing earlier. That has the same logo on the back. Those are printed in white. The windbreakers that we're doing on the web store though have the white stripes on the collar, the cuffs, and the waist. So they've got white stripes that go with it. That's why we're doing white on the windbreakers. We're also doing flannels. And this, this is one of the first ones I had done. This is screen printed, but the ones we're doing on the pre-order are gonna be embroidered. So they're just gonna be like another step up in, uh, in style for the flannels. So these are like a medium weight. They're not jacket heavy and they're not super thin. So they're super warm without being, you know, mega heavy. They're not, they're not a jacket. So t-shirts as well, long sleeve uh, crew necks, uh, the crew neck pullover sweatshirts, pullover hoodie sweatshirts, the windbreakers, and the flannels. Uh, I'm also doing uh, some new TGC key rings, which I think I might have in my pocket. Yep. So these are an acrylic and leather key ring uh, that I'm making, similar to the ones that I made for the Ocean City meet. This is a two color acrylic, black and gold. TGC logo is laser engraved into it. Then I laser cut it. Then I hand wash each one. Then I laser cut this leather strap and then rivet it to the acrylic key tag itself to hold the split ring. So it's a it's a it's basically a two medium key ring. So we've got a acrylic tag with a leather strap holding the split ring to it. So these are also available for pre-order as well. I'll also have these available at shows and you know different places that I'm at from now on as well. But those are for pre-order with all the soft goods. The uh, TGC Anchor Crest stickers are finally back in stock. I've got one of them on the 700. We've been doing these forever and I am the worst at keeping them in stock. They sell out super fast because I never have them on the web store and then it just takes me forever to get them back on the web store. So I'm doing my best to be better with TGC stuff uh, in this coming year for 2020. There's a lot I've always wanted to do with it and I don't know. I don't know if it's because I get lazy or I just have too much to do. I think it's the latter for sure. There's not enough hours in the day to get everything done. Being self-employed is super tough too because when that gets busy, it's a godsend when it gets busy because when it's slow, you get terrified about what you're doing, if you've made the right decisions and uh, if it's gonna be sustainable. So when it gets busy, it's just everything kind of gets put on back burners, especially car projects. Uh, so. 2020, I'm trying to, uh, if I were to have a resolution, I guess, it would be to manage my time better. Um, 
I feel like I have a pretty good hold on it, but they, uh, it just seems like it gets away from me too sometimes. So anyone who juggles their own schedule, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, it's, it's a lot to handle. So 2020, super excited, uh, going to um, do a lot more out in the field with TGC, not necessarily vending shows, but more pop-up meets. Uh, Nikolai from Simply Clean and I have been talking about uh, collaborating on some pop-up meets. So we've been talking about not just uh, the lower 48 in the United States, but actually going uh, beyond and doing more pop-up meets uh, overseas and stuff too. So I've done some TGC ones. We did one at Worthy in 2018, did one in Cologne, Germany. I've done a few in England. Um, going to be at Worthy this year. I've been talking to some friends in Germany and, um, and we're going we're gonna to do another Worthy pop-up meet, but I'm going to try to uh, plan it out better, not just... Um, you know, a day before type deal, which is what pop-up meets technically are, you know, that, that's, that's the whole point. But I'm gonna try to do more of like a sanctioned thing at Werther Z in Austria this year. So gonna be there, uh, gonna do another one in Germany probably after Werther Z. Um, yeah, and who knows, who knows, maybe Nikolai and I will end up doing one uh, in Japan before the year's over as well. So I'm not trying to blow any smoke, but we'll be, uh, we'll be working on some cool stuff for 2020. Also just got off the phone with uh, my buddy Mason who puts on the Riverside show in Chattanooga and um, I might have more of a presence there than just my Corvair as well. So I might actually have a TGC booth set up there. Um, I'm excited about it. I, I don't want to get into the realm of vending shows with TGC and uh, that cost and overhead and then, you know, basically becoming um, tenacious about trying to make money at shows. That's not what I want to do. That's not what I want TGC to be about. So um, with that being said, I am excited though to have TGC more of like a, an actual presence at Riverside. Uh, Mason and Carly have been friends of mine for a long time now and I go to the show every year anyway. So it'd be really cool to have TGC there uh, officially and um, have some new merchandise ready to go for the show and uh, have that available for all of you guys that make it out to Riverside in March. So. With that being said, um, this is the new TGC garage space for the time being, um, certainly through the winter. Uh, really excited about it. And um, yeah, excited to get more stuff in here. Uh, it's only about 15 minutes from my house, so it's really not too far. Head to the Governor's Club web store. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, the Governor's Club. And uh, I'll put a link to the web store in the description of this video. The pre-order is still going on, so get on the web store and uh, get some stickers, get some key rings, get some new shirts. Uh, we ship worldwide. And uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for this episode. I think the next one coming up will be uh, some shop stuff. There'll definitely be something in between now and uh, Riverside in March. So there's always something going on. Podcast is hopefully going uh, off here pretty soon too. So I'm going to be getting all that gear going. I've got my recording studio in the house divided now i've got like half of it recording space and the other half is going to be podcast studio so i'm working on that at home maybe i'll do a short episode of how that's all coming together too and how i'm kind of trying to work the podcast into the youtube channel and everything governor's club and everything that i enjoy doing my music and the laser stuff as well so thanks for watching guys and uh we will see you soon